I only know that I have been, I, ha I am privy to areas of, of the old life and ways of the, of the old people of Australia. And that way, of course, I feel, I feel both enormously privileged and, and in one side of the mind you can feel deeply distressed for them. And then, then you've just got to feel the flow of history through, through life and through this continent. I can remember that being younger than my brother Reg and Mary, they were scampering around and they went up a, they, they went up a tree in the garden and I somehow got myself up into a branch of the tree. Then they hopped down and went somewhere else. And when I looked ahead of me, I saw a great big frog and it was blinking its eyes at me like that. And I was absolutely terrified, but it was my first moment of intense seeing because I can remember when I eventually howled my way down from the fork of the tree, uh, was drawing the frog. And I would have been about two, I suppose, at the time. So I can remember that I started, that the, the feeling that I had between me and the frog, and, and then a sort of a feeling, well, perhaps it's frightened of me too, you know, it was a sort of a em empathetic feeling between us. And that strong seeing that you experienced just, as it were, ran down your arm and made you want to draw. It did, yes. Does yes. that still happen? Oh yes, it does. The eye and the hand often move quite automatically. What other things were you drawing as a child? Well, of course, at school it was the conventional uh, banana and orange on a plate in, in pastels and things like that. And. Um, uh, also, my sister Mary and I brought, brought out our first joint book and we called it Kookaburra and Kangaroo. I was Kookaburra, it was my first nom de plume. And within that, I, I had a lot of drawings and, and little sketches and essays. And Your family owned huge properties right across the Kimberley region. When you left school, you went north with Mary to run one of them. What was your relationship with the Aboriginal community there? Well, that was the time that we were able to get the firmest bridge into it because we were literally for months on, on our complete own, just two girls with Aboriginals there. And then in their ever accommodating way, it was they that drew us into their families, you see. So we, we became the, the sisters to the, the women and the, their children were our children. And, and there was a, a very much of an inter-family relationship. And it's still there. I saw my classificatory son the other day. He's the, he was the lead witness for the big uh, uh, Mirawong Gadjurong land claim that's over that direct area proceeding right now in, in courts held under a Coolabar tree. And how did he come to be your son? Because he was a little boy, the model of many of the early books. This is Geoffrey Chanama. And um, he always tells everyone that I grew him up and that, that I was his mum. And, and when we meet, as we did only the other day, he just puts his arms out and says, mum, you know. <laughs> You left Ivanhoe to go with Mary to London and it wasn't long after you returned from that trip that you married a Sydney journalist. What effect did that have on your life? It was a wonderful eye-opener to expand uh, contracted social knowledge that I had. Being in that world, I also came to Sydney at a time, must have been the last of the Bohe Bohemian Sydney, you see, and he, Frank Lanty was in the midst of it you know, in the midst of it. And how long did the marriage last? About five years. Mm. And then you took your two children and went back and to the country? And I came west, west. I came west, west and north. That's when I had my studio on the banks of the river. That's when I did big paintings like the one behind me there. Very big paintings. They were all done about 1947. And that was the time when I came into very close relationship with, with the older Aboriginal men that had known me a decade earlier well, 
but hadn't been as close. But they were then old men, old Jubal and old Roger. In They were living in the bush camp and I had my studio on the bank of the Ord and the, a lot of links went on there, very serious links. When you say very serious links, what do you mean? Well, they did talk of their old life and they did show me a lot of the old renewal practices and river magic and all, all sorts of areas that, that I just was somehow let into. And people have said, why did they speak to you as a woman? And I, I don't know quite how to answer that, but they knew that I felt very compassionate for them because the old life was completely over and they were at the end of their tether. But that was a very, very important and crucial time for my relationship with the Aboriginals. Some of the men took you on special walks too, didn't they? Including a major one that lasted three weeks. What was that like? I was staying at, you see, I moved around a lot too. I was staying at Muller Buller at the time when it was an Aboriginal station. And, and I knew that there was some, go, there was a link going on between the station, the old men at the station, and they were going to meet up with some desert men. And they were going down the, down the road towards Lake Mackay. And I asked if I could go with them. And they let me go with them. Uh, and we just walked off into the bush. 